Hey there, Central Ohio. I'm 10 Weather Impact Meteorologist Michael Barons. We are getting ready for a very cold stretch of weather here in Central Ohio. We have some warmer time before we get there, but by the time we get to next week, it is diving headfirst into that Arctic air, and that's the main focus of our impact forecast today. Monday through Wednesday, heading into the next week, wind chills are likely to be below zero. You need to bundle up as you head outside, wear all the layers, including possibly the face coverings, because we're going to be looking at temperatures, not just wind chills. That could go below the zero mark. It's going to be very cold as we head toward next week. That warm up, like we mentioned, does come in as we get into the start of the weekend, but it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to really get out and enjoy too much because it comes with rain turning into mix turning into snow as we head through the day on Saturday. Those high temperatures will get up into the upper 30s, but again, it doesn't last long. We start to plunge as we head into Sunday. A few flurries start to come in on the back side of the system. Temperatures only reaching a high of 22 for the back half of the weekend. Again, those things getting pretty cold out there around central Ohio. Here's that system heading our way this weekend. You see the rain and the snow coming through as we head into Saturday. That warm air ahead of the system. What is bringing us that chance for rain? Once we get the system pushing through, though, those lingering flurries kind of hang on as we head into Sunday. But more notably, a big drop in temperatures comes behind uh, the snow and the rain and the mix that we have out there on Saturday. Good news is we're not really expecting to see much in the way of ice accumulation or snow accumulation, mostly just wet roads out there, but we will have to watch for ice later in the evening as temperatures start to fall. Let's take a look at that a little bit closer here. Hour by hour. This is seven o'clock Saturday morning. We're watching that rain push through central Ohio. The further north of I-70 you go, the better the chances will be for a little bit of mix to come in along with this and then eventually snow as you get up in the northern portions of the state. Once we get into the afternoon, we start to see a transition to more of the cold side of the system. Snowflakes start to fall here across central Ohio as we work our way into the evening. Temperatures continue downward. When it comes to rainfall totals out of this system, not an excessive rainmaker, but you know, more rain than we've seen in a while given our cold stretch of weather could pick up around uh, about a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain here across central Ohio by the time this system pushes through. Now, when it comes to temperatures, out there again. We're making a big plunge after we get past the weekend. We warm up for tomorrow and for Saturday, getting above the freezing mark. Finally back to about average for this time of the year should be 37, but we're only there for two days. We start to drop as we head into Sunday. Temperatures falling into the 20s below freezing once again, and then that really cold air gets here as we head into next week. The high temperatures in the single digits. Those are the highs, not the lows. So get ready for this cold air again. Again, pushing our way. It's a big blast of Arctic air. You can see it where it's coming from, up from the northern reaches of Canada, pushing its way down across the Great Lakes and into Ohio. It is just really going to be cold as we head toward next week. If you thought this week was bad, next week going to be that much worse. And again, that's the reason for our 10 TV weather impact alert days, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures and wind chills expected to be below the zero mark for a good portion of the day. Layer up, limit the exposure as you head outside beyond our seven day. This pattern looks to continue. The six to 10 day outlook continues to stay well below normal across the eastern half of the US. Really most of the US seeing at least some kind of temperature below normal. The precipitation chances start to get a little bit drier as we head past this weekend. We're looking at below average chances for uh, rain or snow. Taking a look back over uh, the next are taking a look toward the next 10 days again. Look how much below average we end up going here by the 20th and the 21st. We are more than 30 degrees below where we should be for this time of the year. That real blast of Arctic air again. We should be in the upper 30s for highs. We're going to be in the single digits for a couple days next week. And then by the time we get to the end of that 10 day stretch, we only barely come up near normal by the end of the month. It is still 
going to be very cold as we head uh, beyond the seven day. Speaking of which, your 10 TV weather impact seven day forecast, including those 10 TV weather impact alert days, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. We've been talking about the reasoning behind this cold air coming down. Just kind of a little bit of that cold Arctic air from up north. We're talking polar vortex uh, jet stream gets wavy, pulls in some of that Arctic air from far in the north. And again, we see those cold, cold temperatures heading our way. Note that low Wednesday morning, negative four degrees, negative four Tuesday morning with a high of six in the afternoon, negative two on Monday with a high of four. And again, so we keep talking about the preparation for this bundle up layers. We're not just talking normal layers. If you're going to be outside for long, you got to, of course, have the coat the gloves, the hat, the scarf, but even a face covering because we're going to be talking wind chills that could go at times negative uh, 15 or beyond when it comes to just how cold things are going to feel. It is a very cold forecast heading our way, almost uh, well, definitely dangerously cold as we get uh, into some of those temperatures next week. And you know, when we do get this cold, uh, it's not just yourself that needs to be prepared. You need to take care with your car as well. Mechanics say there is more to think about than just your car's battery dying. They say you know, make sure your fluid levels are where they're supposed to be as well and make sure to warm up that car before you hit the road. I don't have remote start, so I'm, I got to make sure I have gloves. I got two hats in there in case I get in there and it's really cold. Start your car, let it warm up to temperature. Engines, transmissions don't like cold fluids. And you should also check your tire pressure before heading out and do it often. Mechanics recommend you get your car checked by a professional just to be safe. Speaking of the cold weather, right now part of US 23 is closed because of a pothole. The left lane of US 23 northbound is closed near US 42 and ODOT says a large pothole there. They're not going to be able to repair until tomorrow at the earliest because they have to wait for the temperatures to warm up. So if you're heading that way, expect possible backups. And ODOT, of course, encouraging residents to report problematic potholes. And if your car has been damaged by one, you could get reimbursed. You have to pursue the Ohio Court of Claims for reimbursement. Between 2021 and 2023, ODOT paid out more than $274,000 to cars that were damaged by the potholes. Now, speaking of those potholes, I do want to break out here a little bit about just how those form. And of course, we get them every winter. First step here is water seeps through the cracks in the road, collecting underneath that road surface in the base. As we get into the colder temperatures, that water expands and it pushes that pavement upward, breaks up the surface of the asphalt. From there, once you put some weight on top of it, which of course we're doing all the time with roads, traffic coming Coming over, it stresses that weakened pavement. As soon as that we warm up a little bit, that ice melts away. Well, now we've got a cavity underneath where that space used to be. We put that same weight over top of it with a car and well, there goes your pothole. We've just lost the structural integrity of the road and again happens every winter. They have to get out and repair those roads. And of course, the threats this weekend go beyond just pothole formation. I want to talk a little bit more about what we could see in terms of ice out there as the system heads our way. Again, we showed you this earlier that rain snow mix coming across the region, the warm air ahead of it, followed by a quick burst of cold air coming down down behind that system. It's going to result again in the rain that does fall across the region, possibly quickly turning into ice temperatures out there falling rapidly Saturday afternoon. We're going to go from above freezing early in the day down beyond low freezing as we head into the night. And the big problem with this is that we see rain before the temperatures get there. That means we're not going to be able to pre treat roads. You're not going to be able to put the salt or the brine down ahead of time. And of course, that could result in ice forming out there on the roads. What we want to do, of course, is get those salt molecules in there, break that ice potential up, because what we do with that is we move that freezing point of water from 32, potentially as low as 15 by adding in the salt. Of course, again, we're going to have a limited amount of time to do that because you can't put it down 
when the rain is still falling. At least some good news out there are the temperatures. Of course, road temperatures right now well below the freezing mark, but those subsurface temperatures, they're not that cold yet. We are seeing below freezing conditions being reported here around Franklin County, but 31 degrees, that's not too bad. We're not going to see a rapid drop in road temperatures as the temperatures themselves fall this weekend. Should give crews a little window to get out there and treat those roads, but again, we're going to have to do it quickly because if we wait too long, black ice definitely could be a problem heading in to Saturday evening. Now to the latest on the California wildfires. The weakening winds today are helping firefighters out in California, but as the flames spread over the past week, the impacts from the fire have reached as far as space as NASA had to pull their staff from the California based Jet Propulsion Laboratory. CBS's David Malkoff explains how firefighters were able to save the lab from the Eaton fire while many people who work there lost their homes. This is how you see NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory most of the time, a room packed with scientists talking to the stars. It's weird to be in here without people. This is how it looks today. It is the first time in 60 years that we've had to pull people out of this mission operations room. It says Deep Space Network. You're managing things that are as far out as Voyager. Yes, beyond the edge of the solar system. JPL director Lori Leshen was very worried about this place. Worried about her house, too, right in the Eaton fire zone. We actually watched the hillside around us burn on our security cameras. To show you just how close the fire got to JPL, we're gonna split screen right here so we can show you the fire that Dr. Leshen shared from that night. It was right at their doorstep. Here on lab, we have our own firefighters. The NASA Fire Department was right in this fight. Firehawks snorkeling water from JPL tanks. The DC-10 is dropping all the retardant. You can see the, uh, the FOS check lines. They've been lying here on the hillside. This is the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. Yes, it is. It's right in the middle of the burn zone. We are, we are right here tucked up in the foothills. It was very scary. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, uh, we could see the fire very clearly from here approaching the lab. JPL's Ian Pinkham, a single dad, has been going practically nonstop since this began. His 11-year-old daughter is staying with friends. I got to see her for about an hour uh, two days ago. Uh, I snuck out and uh, went and gave her a hug. I think that's the longest hug I've ever uh, gotten back from her. Um, wasn't, uh, wasn't easy to turn around and say, it's okay, I'll see you in a couple days. As he was here, keeping JPL safe. They were very concerned at that point. Yes, absolutely. We were, we were meeting at that point and... Um, Thinking that you were going to lose buildings, maybe. Yeah, preparing for um, an eventual fire, yes. Deputy Director Leslie Livesay was one of more than 200 JPL employees whose home is now gone. If you lived somewhere for 21 years, you, you know, my niece lived with me, and so it was, there were a lot of memories there, family visits. She says it's likely no other employer has lost more in Altadena. Certainly JPL, Caltech combined are likely the largest um, employer in the area with losses. Through all this, no work has stopped. More than 40 spacecraft out there are still talking back to Earth. This room is how the universe understands its nature. But it was nature that brought heartbreak to Altadena and space lab next door. Well, we are very strong. You know, JPL is a very um, tight organization. We will come together and this community together with, you know, outside resources will we'll rebuild and, and we will and we will get we will be fine. I'm Dave Malkoff, CBS News. And FEMA has announced a transitional shelter and assistance program for those impacted families. It allows people to stay at participating hotels until they can find housing. FEMA will also send about 500 people to remove hazardous waste from the area. The cost of that cleanup is estimated to be $100 million. And that's it for today's 10 weather impact show. Thanks for joining us here on 10 plus 10 TV plus. Of course, coming up later tonight, Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz, what's the latest on that cold outbreak.